Dear Esther, the morning after I was washed ashore, salt in my ears, sand in my mouth, and the waves always at my ankles, I felt as though everything had conspired to this one last shipwreck. I remembered nothing but water, stones in my belly and my shoes, threatening to drag me under to where only the most listless of creatures swim. I thought it was a cutscene, but it's not. Here we are. It's kind of jerky, because I am playing with a... There's a slight problem. It's not really a problem, but when you go underwater, it's dark. It gets very dark, and there's some portions where you have to wade through water, and it, it's tough. Because of how dark it gets. Now, this is done on the Source Engine. And, uh, fun fact, there's no weapons in this game. Nothing but a flashlight, and you can't see it. It just comes on when it gets kind of dark, and you're in places. Um, essentially, Dear Esther is a book that is done through gameplay. And it really gives you that ambience that you just... So, here we are. We're on an island. Um, that is... And... Oh, man. That's some organic chemistry right there. We got, uh... An antimer. Stuff. What is that? That's CoHOH. That's peptone? Two, three, four, five, two... No, it'd be... Shit, it's been a long time since chemistry. I'm a f <laughs> It's been a long time. I'm an engineer, I'm not a chemist. Screw chemistry. Originally I was a chemist, but uh, I switched my major change. Oh man, so let's check this out. We got a nice little island here. Oh, it's a beautiful island. And this game's all about the story. It's all about feeling... Feeling like you're on a deserted island. But there's more to it than that. And just keep that in mind. That there is more to this game than what you experience or what you see. It's all about the way it makes you feel, I guess. So it's a great game to play, um, because it's not a game that you necessarily want to, you know, it's like 10 bucks or 20 bucks, I think. And once you experience it one time, it doesn't have much play replay value, um, not as much as like a book would, of like rereading a book. If you really like a book, it's always good fun to reread it, but uh, not necessarily, you know. Donnelly reported the legend of the Hermit, a holy man who sought solitude in its most pure form. Allegedly, he rode here from the mainland in a boat without a bottom, so all the creatures of the sea could rise at night to converse with him. How disappointed he must have been with their chatter. Perhaps now, when all that haunts the ocean is the rubbish dumped from the tankers, he'd find more peace. They say he threw his arms wide in a valley on the south side, and the cliff opened up to provide him shelter. They say he died of fever 116 years later. The shepherds left gifts for him at the mouth of the cave, but Donnelly records they never claimed to have seen him. I have visited the cave and I have left my gifts, but like them, I appear to be an unworthy subject of his solitude. Try playing with the control. I was using the controller. Let's try switching it up here to my keyboard and mouse. Um, I think it'll be a little less jerky. We want to get across here. And I'm not sure if we can get across here. So let's head down on the beach, I guess. Since that's, uh... This game is all about the symbolism. Now, when he talks, symbols. When the island, there's symbols. There's symbols everywhere. I mean, I think it's kind of like a puzzle that you got to solve. And, uh... It is quite, quite epic if you're, if you're intelligent. If you're not intelligent, well, then you're playing the wrong game because you're not going to like this. Cause it's uh, a little out there. It's a little out there. This game, this island's so beautiful. It just gets amazing towards the middle. I'm just going to play all this in one Those sitting. islands in the distance, I'm sure, are nothing more than relics of another time. Sleeping giants, somnambulist gods laid down for a final dreaming. I wash the sand from my lips and grip my wrist ever more tightly. My shaking arms will not support my fading diaries. And uh, as you can tell, that uh, he starts talking about islands in Donnelly. Donnelly's an important character who uh, 
I guess we meet at some point. We will meet Donnelly, but... Another thing about this game is that it has an absolute tremendous soundtrack. I mean, tremendous. The point that it's... A wonderful a sight. The moon cresting the junction between the cliff path and the stone circle. It cast a shadow of the ridge across the beach, all the world as if you had signed your name in untidy handwriting. Um, I'm not going to explain the symbols to anybody. Um, part, of, part of playing or reading a book or anything is understanding it for yourself. And, uh, and, uh, you want that list. You really want to feel like that, uh, understand what's going on. Feel the symbols within yourself rather than having someone explain When someone had died or was dying, or was so ill they gave up what little hope they could sacrifice, they cut parallel lines into the cliff, exposing the white chalk beneath. You could see them from the mainland or the fishing boat, and know to send aid or impose a cordon of protection, and wait a generation until whatever pestilence stalked the cliff path died along with its hosts. My lines are just for this. To keep any would-be rescuers at bay. The infection is not simply of the flesh. This way. This way. It's been a while. It's, it's been a while. But as you can see, it's oh man, look at the scenery, scenery. They oh. were God-fearing people, those shepherds. There was no love in the relationship. Donnelly tells me that they had one Bible that was passed around in strict rotation. It was stolen by a visiting monk in 1776, two years before the island was abandoned altogether. In the interim, I wonder, did they assign chapter and verse to the stones and grasses, marking the geography with a superimposed significance that they could actually walk the Bible and inhabit its contradiction? That, that sentence was full of metaphors. I mean, a stolen Bible in 1776? Hmm. wonder what that could mean. Now, and, and just don't think that I'm being just like, you know, out there. Um, they really are. It really, really is done well. If you guys, uh, if you like Dear Esther, they did a horror thriller similar to Dear Esther on the Source Engine, which is scary as shit, mind you. I'm um, probably the best horror survival game I've ever played, and as you guys know, I don't like horror survival games. It scared the shit out of me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them, but, uh, oh man, it was good. It's kind of like this. You don't really get any weapons or anything, and you have to defend yourself. Dear Esther is, does, it's a little scary, I guess, just because of the way it Dear makes Esther, I met Paul. I made my own little pilgrimage. My Damascus, a small semi-detached on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. We drank coffee in his kitchen and tried to connect to one another. Although he knew I hadn't come in search of an apology, reason or retribution, he still spiralled in panic, thrown high and lucid by his own dented bonnet. Responsibility had made him old. Like us, he'd already passed beyond any conceivable boundary of life. I threw my arms wide and the cliff opened out before me, making this rough home. I transferred my belongings from the bothy on the mount and tried to live here instead. It was cold at night and the sea lapped at the entrance at high tide. To climb the peak, I must first venture even deeper into the veins of the island, where the signals are blocked altogether. Only then will I understand them, when I stand on the summit and they flow into me, uncorrupted. Neurons, a, a neuron diagram with the same dicarbon CO2. No, this is C2O. OH bond. Oh man, the chemistry was such a long time ago. There's some uh, uneven bonding between these. I should check this out. I, sh I should. Uh, I should. Google it's been a long time since chemistry. What do we got here? Looks like... I don't know what the hell it is. It's more neuronic drawings over here of neurons and such.
And uh, if you're wondering what the point is to this game, um, the point is is the experience that you get from playing it. It's something that now I'm a gamer. I've played I don't know a lot a lot of games, thousands and thousands of games I've played, beaten the majority of them, and this is unlike anything I've ever played. Continue up the island here, and you should read some more of the story. And uh, I'll give you guys a little hint to some of the symbols. As you can see, in the in the ever distance, there's always a lighthouse, and the beacon's always shining in, in the foggy distance, ever drawing us near. As I, as I make my way to that lighthouse, which is, uh, you start in the ocean, and you make your way to a point, to, to like, a, a climax. The vegetation the here has fossilized from the roots up. To think they once grazed animals here, the remnants of occupation being evidence to that. It is all sick to death. The water is too polluted for the fish. The sky is too thin for the birds and the soil is cut with the bones of hermits and shepherds. I've heard it said that human ashes make great fertilizer, that we could sow a forest from all that is left of your hips and ribcage, with enough left over to thicken the air and repopulate the bay. Let's, uh, let me check something here. Sorry to break the mood. Never mind. The voice is just a little quiet as all compared to the music, so I change it. Apparently I can't. So as we go through, we ascend. As you can tell, we've, we've been doing nothing but ascending. Um, climbing up. Um, a lot of OH bonds there. So, uh, we're gonna continue ascending. I wish, you know, you kind of, when you play this game, you kind of wish there was, like, a run, or, like, a jump, and there's not. There's no run, no jump. All there is is back, forward, left, right, and, uh, you can look around. That's all there is. Um, this is not Call of Duty, so... <laughs> it, it's, it's something else. It's something more, and it is, and I guarantee you, if you play through the whole thing, you will be rewarded gratefully rewarded for playing. If you if you like things with deeper meaning, things that uh, that aren't necessarily obvious. And uh, and we're done with chapter one. Just like that. I'm gonna read more and more of the story. And uh, and as you go on, you'll start to understand what's going on. It's only four chapters, should probably take me about two hours to beat it, I assume. Dear Esther. I have now driven the stretch of the M5 between Exeter and Bristol over 21 times. But although I have all the reports and all the witnesses, and have cross-referenced them within a millimeter using my ordnance survey maps, I simply cannot find the location. You'd think there would be marks to serve as some evidence. It's somewhere between the turn-off for Sanford and the welcome brake services. But although I can always see it in my rearview mirror, I have as yet been unable to pull ashore. So as as he was talking before of stories of uh, of those before him and those to come, now he's changing his his uh, his tone. He speaks to something different, to something uh, something more personal. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try kind of explain the symbol or the symbolism or how I interpret it at least. Now you know, uh, just like a book can be interpreted in any any number of ways. But uh, I'll explain the symbolism from uh, the first chapter. Is you're always ascending, climbing upward um, to a peak, and as you can tell, we're going downward again. And uh, but we're not going super fast. You know, we're not like cruising downward, but uh, we're going down. And that's I believe it's the symbol. As as you grow older in life, you reach the peak of your physical ability in your mid twenties. 
No, your mind continues to grow. Your, your body actually starts to decay around the age of 22, 23. Uh, you, you're, that's it. You're as strong as you'll ever be, and your body starts to decay. And, uh, and he talks about not being able to find things to, uh, missing turnoffs and things like that. And you, you'll see what that means a little bit later. Why he's, to, why he's writing these letters to Esther. Lots of shipwrecks on this island. Lots and lots of shipwrecks. Old, empty containers. But surprisingly, there's no wildlife at all. People. And clearly people have been here. There's wrecked ships, and containers, and there's cranes, and there's all kinds of weird stuff, but, uh, but no people. Now, you can't go that way. That way's a dead end. I know that for a fact. <clears throat> I'm gonna make this a little, f as fast as I can, because, uh, you know, it is a little slow. It's not exactly action-packed. Um, shit, I think I was supposed to, I was supposed to go up this way. Go in the wrong direction, but that's okay. Um, the island symbolizes something. The ships symbolize something in this game. The story, the reader, Donnelly, everything. You know, the the uh, carbon bonds, the you will find multiple schematics for electronics and circuitry. I had kidney stones and you visited me in the hospital. After the operation, when I was still half submerged in anesthetic, your outline and your speech both blurred. Now my stones have grown into an island, and made their escape, and you have been rendered opaque by the car of a drunk. Opaque. That means she's dead? Killed by a drunken driver. It's, uh, it's a shame. But, uh, but everything, like I said, just pay attention to every little detail, because it all... And I love the way that they, encom they encompass the detail and the symbol uh, with the gameplay. And as you move forward, the story also progresses, so... It's quite, quite the playthrough, especially if you like art or books. I've begun to climb, away from the sea and towards the center. It is a straight line to the summit, where the evening begins to coil around the aerial and squeeze the signals into early silence. The Bothy squats against the mount to avoid the gaze of the aerial. I too will creep under the island like an animal and approach it from the northern shore. Keeps mentioning an island, and we happen to be on an island. But, uh... But are we really on an island? You know, we don't know that this is an island. All we, we can see shore, and we see lighthouses. But, uh, but what I can't see ocean over there. We don't know, maybe there's... The Bothy was constructed originally in the early 1700s. By then, shepherding had formalized into a career. The first habitual shepherd was a man called Jacobson, from a lineage of migratory Scandinavians. He was not considered a man of breeding by the mainlanders. He came here every summer whilst building the Bothy, hoping eventually that becoming a man of property would secure him a wife and a lineage. Donnelly records that it did not. He caught some disease from his malcontented goats and died two years after completing it. There was no one to carve white lines into the cliff for him, either. White lines in the cliff. See, there's caves in the walls. Oh, man. It's down here. Long way down. So, as you guys have been watching and uh, listening to the story, perhaps, uh, perhaps you start to think now about what everything means, about, uh, about what the island means, about who Donald is, about why a guy who is apparently stranded on an island, what he calls an island, uh, is writing a letter to Esther. And where is he? And why is he writing it? And are you this guy that's writing the story? So many unanswered questions, and uh, it's a lot to answer, but, uh, but it'll all come together. Because uh, a lot of, a lot of stories like this, they never really answer them, you know? Like, uh, I don't know how many of you guys have read A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. It's a, it's a book by James Joyce, written in the early 20s? I think the 20s. Um, in that book, 
it's it's probably I don't know. It's probably one of the best books of all time. No, it is boring as hell. They found Jakobsen in early spring. The thaw had only just come. Even though he'd been dead nearly seven months, his body had been frozen right down to the nerves and had not even begun to decompose. His fingernails were raw and bitten to the quick. They found the phosphorescent moss that grows in the caves deep under the nails. Whatever he'd been doing under the island when his strength began to fail is lost. He'd struggled halfway up the cliff again, perhaps in a delirium, perhaps trying to reach the Bothy's fire before curling into a stone and expiring. Now, as we can see, oh, anyway, Portrait of the Artist says, Amen. Um, if you haven't read it and you are a, a book nerd and you enjoy, you enjoy symbolistic reads, now that book is uh, something else. I wouldn't say I enjoyed it, but I'd say I would say I'm a better man. For Something that everybody should probably do at some time in their intellectual lives. Because uh, it is something else. Anyway. Climbing um, down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. The skin has turned a bright, tight pink, and the pain is crashing in on waves, winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggled back to the bothy to rest. But it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. They will keep me lucid for my final ascent. Climbing down the caves, and uh, here we are. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we're actually supposed to go down here, but, uh... Now, uh, that's Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is, uh, it's, it's fairly short. Uh, chapter 3 is much longer, so much better, too. But, uh, the story, the story continues.